We're talking to Mr. Earl Jordan, the uh, president and CEO of the uh, organization Partners in the Struggle. And with, of course, Mr. Jordan is Reverend Stevenson, who is the uh, pastor of St. Luke Primitive uh, Baptist Church. And of course, Reverend Stevenson, I think before we had our first commercial break, we were talking about uh, some of the causes for some of this violence. Let's uh, have you to start us off uh, and talk about uh, some of the things that you believe to be uh, the cause of this violence. And, and, and of course, uh, uh, Mr. Jordan will uh, pick up uh, after that. Yeah, when we look at violence, we certainly know that, particularly in our communities, that we can't look at it in silo. There are a lot of contributing factors. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the other piece of it is that you have to look at the great disparity mm -hmm. in our communities as it relates to violence. Mm -hmm. A young African-American male is 33 times more, is 33 more times likely mm -hmm. to die from gun violence mm -hmm. than a white female. Mm -hmm. And so that, that, you know, that's astounding that, when you mm -hmm, look at the mm -hmm. bar and the, and the bar for the young African-American mm -hmm. male mm -hmm. is here, and, and, uh -huh. and for everyone else, it's pretty, pretty low. Okay. Uh -huh. And so there are a lot of contributing factors. Uh, and, and then you look at who is committing these crimes and why mm. they're committing the crimes. And at the, at the helm of a lot of it is there's, there's a sense of hopelessness. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and when you don't care about yourself, you know, you really don't care about others. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so when people reach this stage of hopelessness, it's, it's almost a stage of suicidalness mm -hmm. where I don't care about myself, I don't care about living, mm -hmm. and I certainly can't value your life if, if I, I don't, don't value, value my life. Mm -hmm. And so all of these contributing factors mm -hmm. of hopelessness in our community mm -hmm. where we don't, we're not valuing life. Mm -hmm. And so we need to speak to all of these things, education, opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you, you've got individuals, and I know particularly at my church, you got young men who are mm -hmm. in their 30s and who are fathers and who are trying to mm -hmm. raise their families, but when they were 19 year old, 19 year old mm -hmm. they got a felony mm -hmm. from selling drugs or something and have been locked out of society yeah, for, for the last 13, 14 mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. of their life. Mm -hmm. And so if they're not strong enough to not give up and to continue to push and, and mm -hmm. create opportunities even when doors are shut, mm -hmm. then it's very easily to, to go back to what got mm -hmm. you into that predicament mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the first place. And so mm -hmm. we have to look at all of these opportunities. Mm -hmm. and. And one of the things I like about what, what Earl has been doing mm -hmm. is that he has been right there on the battlefield. It's, yeah. it's mm -hmm. not until you've looked into the eyes of a mother right. who mm -hmm. has buried her child mm -hmm. for uh, no reason at all, mm -hmm. oftentimes, over mm -hmm. nothing, nothing. Mm -hmm. that says that we are at a state of emergency. Mm -hmm. yeah. We can no longer sit back and, and pretend as if though it is not happening simply mm -hmm. because it hadn't knocked on our door. Mm -hmm. we, mm -hmm. we all have to come together as a community mm -hmm. and talk about ways to eliminate, decrease mm -hmm. this violence in our community. And, and of course, I guess, uh, my Brother Jordan, you'll say if it hasn't knocked on your door yet, it will if it continues as we're going. Speak right, to that, right. Uh, Echoing what um, Pastor Stevenson is saying, mm -hmm. my level of knowledge right now is everything that he said is, is right on mm -hmm. versus our children who are committing these crimes that may not have mm -hmm. getting or getting enough love mm -hmm. or not getting no spiritualness mm -hmm. in their life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I look at that and as I said earlier, a lot of our kids out here, they are lost. Uh, they don't know exactly where they can go if they do mm -hmm. get into some type of trouble. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy to get in trouble, it's hard mm -hmm. to, to, to get out of this trouble that you get in. Mm -hmm. And so now going into my 10th year with Partners in the Struggle, I've seen so much. I've seen these mm -hmm. young kids who don't have the focus of trying to get out of this small box. Mm -hmm. And what we want to do right now is to let them know that, you know, basically with, with, with Frank, Pastor Stevenson at the church where we're in South Nashville that mm -hmm. God loves you Good. Mm -hmm. and we're gonna pray it out that you can do something other than being a mm -hmm. killer mm -hmm. or being a drug dealer mm -hmm. or going out committing these serious mm -hmm. crimes is gonna take away from your family for the rest of your life mm -hmm. so it's a lot of attributes that, that goes on with the gun violence we have a lot of illegal guns that are in our community yeah. in the black community mm -hmm. that no one wants to address you know these are the kids who have no hope and then if someone puts a gun in their hand or puts some drugs in their hand mm -hmm. if you ain't got none this is easy to get my, my, my stomach is, mm -hmm. is, is is grumbling i need some food so you can mm -hmm. go ahead and get your hustle on mm -hmm. so it's a lot of things that's going on but right now you know i know god has put me and frank together mm -hmm. and we're going to make it happen not just in south nashville we're going to go mm -hmm. abroad we're going to do this thing on a national level where we can try to make people understand that you don't have to take a life mm -hmm. you don't have to pick up this gun and commit this Mm -hmm. seriousness in your life mm -hmm. is going to affect you for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. So we're going to make it happen and um, you know I just think with everyone's help and everyone doing what we're supposed to do as far as 
looking at the problem, mm -hmm. looking at coming together and raising our children the way mm -hmm. we was raised when I was growing mm -hmm. up in the 70s, mm -hmm. you know, as a, as a community, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, I think we're going to get back to mm -hmm. that. Uh, uh, Reverend Stevenson, uh, when you look at your congregation and uh, the young people, do you have any many young people in your uh, congregation that, that 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 you can use to somehow reach these other young people? Or how, I mean, what, what, what seems to be the problem with uh, uh, most of their attitudes toward churches and whatever? Is, a absolutely, you know, there. Yeah, I, I think, uh, Dr. Haney, that it's not coincidental that, that I'm, the God has allowed me to pastor at this church, mm -hmm. which is yeah. two blocks down the street from where I grew up in mm -hmm. university courts. Mm -hmm. And uh, matter of fact, um, uh, I was one of those bad little boys, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, over in that area. That church was there when I was a little boy. I, I, I can admit this now. I think the statute of limitation is over <laughs> with, but I think I threw one of the rocks and bust out one of the windows mm -hmm. in the, in the mm -hmm. early 80s. Mm -hmm. yeah, we, we threw quite a bit of rocks, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I was one of those young men mm -hmm. in that area, in that neighborhood, who needed to understand that there were other avenues. Right. Mm -hmm. And so some, uh, some of those uh, young people in that community, that's all they've ever seen is violence. That's mm -hmm. all they've seen is if somebody hits you, you hit them back and mm -hmm. you do whatever mm -hmm. it takes to win. And, 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 and at a young age, I saw people die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I was nine years old when I saw a guy get shot in the head, and I jumped off my bicycle mm -hmm. and ran, but my bicycle fell next to his body, mm -hmm. and when the when the police were there, they wouldn't let me get my bike out mm -hmm. of the yellow tape. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, so I mean, I was I saw this, and so so many of our other children have have seen this type of violence mm -hmm. in our community, and so we have to first of all give them hope and let them understand that mm -hmm. there are opportunities and right. and mm -hmm. show them that there are opportunities, and so each one of us have a responsibility yeah. mm -hmm. uh, for reaching the other. So I do use mm -hmm. youth in my church to mm -hmm. talk to the other youth who may be involved in gangs or mm -hmm. what have you. Mm -hmm. And they come and they share and they have open dialogue so that they can move forward and mm -hmm. move past some of the issues mm -hmm. and some of the things they're mm -hmm. dealing with. Mm -hmm. Well, Jordan, you know, we've got about uh, 30 uh, seconds before we have our second uh, commercial break. But when we come back, I want you and uh, Brother Stevenson to think in terms of uh, uh, how this uh, cease, this national ceasefire against gun violence is organized mm -hmm. and some of the things that uh, other folks might be able to do in order to uh, help the two of you mm -hmm. uh, spread the uh, word gr in, in, in a greater sense of, of, of this as a national organization because it's a national problem. Right. And I think the only way that it can be settled is the national efforts. Mm -hmm. And of course, let me encourage, uh, let me uh, take this uh, second commercial break and we'll be back with you following this very, very short break. Jordan and uh, Reverend.